ready to feed the people who come. There need to be several pigs slaughtered at this time to feed the people who come. Here you see some men that are singeing one of them, and later on that will be cut up. As the meat is cut up, it's divided out to the various groups that come, and they cook the meat over their fires that they make surrounding the home where the granny has died. Men have been out in the jungle cutting down a tree to use for the coffin. And the coffin is hacked into two sections. Here we see one section being brought into the village. It's very important at a funeral for a shaman to be present or a spirit priest, one who will help the soul of the dead person go to the land of the ancestors. Here's a man coming from another village. As he approaches the house, the people there are very happy to welcome him, of course, because he is a specialist in the ceremony which is going to take two nights and three days. The spirit priest or shaman is fed and then he sits just outside the door smoking his tobacco pipe. Inside the house we see the body has been prepared for the coffin. Notice the stool on the right. It has been turned upside down and that is so that no evil spirit will be tempted to come and sit on it. The men lit a lamp and they were still continuing to work on that coffin. Two parts to it. When they had finished with the coffin, they brought it inside the house, put the body in it, and then very carefully sealed it up. For you see, the burial wouldn't be for several days yet. When everything is in readiness, we see the shaman come and sit near the coffin and explain to that granny how her soul is to go, what things to avoid, which path to take, and so on. This takes hours. Up above the coffin, you see many of the clothes that she has made with her own hands. Those will not be buried with her, by the way. Just 27 years ago, the first Akha believers took a stand for Christ in Thailand. Now, Akha, many Akha had been Christians for many years in Burma before where we used to work, but just about 27 years ago, the first few accepted Christ, and so 25 years later, they had a 25-year jubilee. And we had some 28 churches, members from 28 churches come to that jubilee. Here are some of them lined up, ready for the opening. During that Jubilee celebration, it was thrilling, really, to see the various churches as they were lined up, dressed often in their finest Akha outfits, and they marched into the tabernacle where the sessions were to be held. One thing the Akha love, of course, is good music. And here you have a choir which has walked for two days to come to this Jubilee. For the programs and services in the tabernacle, the people just sat on the ground. And they would stay there hours as the various programs took place and they participated in them in a very intimate and wonderful way. It was a thrilling thing to, to watch. And there was always music. Here's the man with his drum. Incidentally, he was one of the first believers. During this Akha Jubilee, there were many groups of young people who had prepared special numbers to sing. This 25th Jubilee celebration lasted for three days. And the people were really thrilled as they took part in it and as they went back, they felt a sense of renewal and the church has been growing ever since. One of the young people participating in that Jubilee was A Chao. You saw her picture before, the one who helps now as a house mother in the New Life Center. After the meeting was over, we asked her to stand by one of these spirit shelters, which was used before the people became Christians. And now they're simply making a replica of it to show their children, because many of the children who live in a Christian village have never seen this. Elaine and I were in our home here in Chiang Rai, looking at some of the proof of the Lahu Bible. I was the one who keyed it into a computer, the Old Testament and the New Testament, and then we had a lot of proofreading after that. 
The use of a computer has really revolutionized our work. I've been using it for many things, not just with Lahu literature, but also with Aka literature. The man who is working with me here is an Aka man. He and I were able to put out five or six Aka books by the use of this computer. I used it as a word processor, actually, and then we used a very fine Epson printer, the LQ2500, if you're interested, and had the books printed down in Bangkok. Take a good look at Logo, which is the name of this Aka man. He has a burden to go back up into China and evangelize his own people. When he came from China through Burma down into Thailand, he was not a Christian. He has come to know Christ. His life has been changed. He is saying now, we've got to go back up into Yunnan. We've got to go back to my own relatives, to my clan's people, and bring Christ to them. Pray for him. Pray for the others. This guy is a part of the future of our work out there in Thailand and perhaps even in China as well. Secretary of the Lahu Baptist Convention in Thailand, and he is here in Green Lake. Uh, we're thrilled to have him here, by the way. I am Paul Lewis. Of course, Neil will know about that. But Suet is here to tell about the things that are taking place in the Lahu Baptist Convention of Thailand. Suet, first, let me ask you, how many churches are there in this uh, Lahu Baptist Convention? We have uh, 114 churches. 114 churches. Where, where are these? Are these down near Bangkok? Or? No. It's a, in the north of Thailand, um, in, in the mountains. In the mountains? Yes. Have you been to all these places yet yourself? Um, not, not all. About 50 uh, six churches. H have you not been in the job long? How long have you been in this position doing um, this work? That's 11 months. 11 months. Uh, but you hope to get to the other churches too, do sure, you? Sure, sure. Now, uh, are these churches divided up in any way? How, because some would be in one area, others, do they have associations? How do they divide we, up? We divide uh, into uh, six associations. Six associations? Yeah. Ah, okay. Now, what would the total membership of all the, the churches be? There? Um, six, uh, six thousand. Six, six thousand, thousand people yeah. who yeah. are baptized who are in these in these churches now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you were mentioning a minute ago about a man who had been an animistic leader, kind of a, a messiah figure, Janu by name. Tell a little about Janu. What happened with him? Um, at the convention this uh -huh. year, uh, he came to a convention, and after them... You, the convention uh, in, in Thailand, you in mean? In Thailand, the, yes. The Lahu Baptist Convention. Lahu Baptist convention. Okay, what happened And there? after them, he uh, went back to his village and baptized. He was baptized, yeah. oh. And after he baptized him, uh, it seems that thousands of uh, Lapo people want to be Christian because uh, this man, and, and in one month, uh, there they, they are uh, 200 people bad times. Now, uh, let me just explain a little about this. This man who was a messianic uh, type before was looking for the truth. In many ways, he'd been reading, he learned how to read and write Lahu, which we thought was very wonderful. And then he had a vision. And he felt that he really met with Christ. And one day he began to say to the people, you know, everything we have looked for, everything we have wanted, we find in Christ. And so he got very excited about this and wanted to have an evangelist come. And uh, he was baptized. And right after he was baptized, what did he do? I was not there. Um, but I heard, uh, he, what did he do when he had been baptized? Yes, uh, that, that is a small fish pound. Yeah. Um, uh, in, in the valley, so all the village go there, and that that day, about 42 uh -huh. villages baptized together with uh, well, He was the first one to be yes, baptized? Yeah, yes, Then after that, did he help to baptize? Mm -hmm. That's what uh, I heard, he helped <laughs> to baptize, which is something we usually don't do, but it just seemed to be the right thing there. Uh, now, what's going to happen if there are hundreds and maybe even thousands of these Lahuni who become Christians? Are they going to have pastors? Sure, sure. 
and also the our convention we have to plan and to send evangelists to work with them. Are and there also, enough now yeah, or not? At this time we have a begin to work and can uh -huh. campaign to get a contribution from churches. Right. Many, many even we are in the in the uh, very very hard uh, condition of economies, yeah. but we are willing to to share Wonderful. and to give and to work for this project. How much have some of them given, for example? Can you give any idea? Um, in I high money, of course. I think at this time about uh, about two uh, twenty thousand. Oh, That's, um, wonderful. Uh, five or six churches. Oh, really? Yeah. Have given that much? Yes. I got to work this out in dollars. This would be about uh, eight hundred dollars that they've given, and that is out of, of poverty. Believe me. Uh, do you have enough Bible trained people then to go out and serve as pastors? Have, have they all had Bible school training? Uh, we do not have a Bible school now. Uh, what we have is to be trained in the villages, uh -huh. in the association, uh -huh. right. and pastor conference in Chennai. Yeah. And we now are planning to uh, open the Bible school when? next year. But next year, next okay, year. what date? It would be May, May of 1990. Is 1990, that it? yes. You hope to open a Bible yes. school. Yes. Where will that be opened? It would be Chennai in the in Chennai. Chennai. Yes. Do you have buildings? We have a center. We have a center. We have a buildings. Is the center in Chennai? Uh, outside Just Chiang outside. Yeah. How far? How many um, kilometers? About eight kilometers. About eight kilometers yeah. outside. That would be, say, five miles just uh, to the east, isn't it? Yes. To the east yeah. of there. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We'll be praying for You're you. <laughs>